Good evening and welcome. Tonight I'm going to be reading to you this book, People of Pride, 25 Great LGBTQ Americans by Chase Clemesha, MD. Let's just dive right in. Introduction. This book is a rainbow of biographies. Here are 25 and more lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender people who accomplished great things all together in one book. These LGBTQ people are in the arts, literature, entertainment, science, medicine, sports, politics, advocacy, and business. In other words, the full diverse range of occupations and interests that all people pursue. These people's worlds are all different. Each of their struggles is different. They have achieved different goals, but they all worked hard, and in spite of challenges, they succeeded. Their inspiring journeys are all something to be proud of. First is Wanda Sykes. Wanda Sykes is an actor, writer, and comedian known for her sense of humor and bubbly personality. After college, she worked for the U.S. government with a top security clearance. After a few years, she knew this wasn't the right job for her. Sykes loved to make people laugh, and friends often told her, you should be on the stage. So she began performing at local clubs. Sykes loved it, and the audience loved her too. She has now appeared in many movies and TV shows, and has won awards for her writing and performances. Sykes charms audiences with jokes about herself, her family, and politics. Wanda Sykes is proud of being able to help people have fun laughing at life. Next we have Andy Warhol. When he was young, Andy Warhol sometimes felt like he didn't fit in. He also had health problems that often kept him home from school. But like his mother, Warhol was good at drawing. Even though his parents didn't have much money, they bought him a camera and signed him up for art classes. Warhol liked expressing himself through lines, shapes, and color, and he went on to study art in college. Warhol became known for his colorful paintings of soup cans and celebrities, and he helped lead the pop art movement of the 1950s and 60s. He said, in the future, everyone will be world famous for 15 minutes. Andy Warhol was proud of his art, which made him world famous well beyond 15 minutes. Next we have George Takei. During World War II, when George Takei was young, he and his family were forced out of their home in Los Angeles, California. They were sent to internment camps along with many other Japanese Americans. Japan was an enemy in the war, and the U.S. government became distrustful of Americans with Japanese heritage, imprisoning them in camps around the country. As he grew up, Takei never forgot how hard that was for his family. It became Takei's mission in life to raise awareness of that dark and shameful chapter of American history. As an adult, he started acting and became a well-known actor on the TV show Star Trek. In addition to acting, Takei has written plays and books. He is also an advocate for justice. He has spoken out in favor of marriage equality for all and highlighted the struggles of Japanese Americans. Takei is also known to millions of social media followers for his clever sense of humor. George Takei proudly uses his fame to bring attention to the prejudices that many people face. Next we have Bayard Rustin. Bayard Rustin grew up as a Quaker, a type of Christianity in which people work for peace and justice. He was a natural leader and became involved in many causes, including the desegregation of buses, fair employment laws, and rights for Japanese Americans during World War II. Rustin believed in nonviolence. During that war, he spent more than two years in prison as a conscientious objector, refusing to be forced to fight. He said that peace was the best way to fight hate, and he shared these ideas with Martin Luther King Jr., 
but even within the civil rights movement, Rustin faced discrimination as a gay man. He often had to work behind the scenes, including when he organized the March on Washington in 1963, where Dr. King gave his famous I Have a Dream speech. Bayard Rustin must have been very proud when 250,000 people came to Washington, D.C. to peacefully demand their rights. Next we have Craig Luganis. Craig Luganis loves to perform and compete. As a child, he took dance and gymnastics lessons. Then at the age of nine, he began diving. Luganis loved bouncing off the diving board, sailing through the air, and gliding into the water. He worked hard to master the grace and skill needed to win trophies. He won medals in the 1976, 1984, and 1988 Olympic Games, and he also won six World Diving Champion titles. In the middle of his career, Luganis had the extra burden of staying healthy as an athlete with human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, the illness that causes acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, or AIDS. He is one of the greatest divers in history. Greg Luganis was proud to earn four Olympic gold medals and to be a role model for all athletes. And next we have Lana and Lily Wachowski. Lights, camera, action. Sisters Lana and Lily Wachowski are American film writers and directors. They are also transgender women. Today they know all about the glamour and action of Hollywood, but they didn't always. They grew up in the Chicago area, and as children, they enjoyed drawing and writing comics and going to the movies. Later, the Wachowski started a painting and construction business, but they kept writing stories. They describe their relationship as kind and supportive. People who have worked with the Wachowski say it's like they have two bodies and one brain. The sisters are best known for writing and directing the popular science fiction movie The Matrix and its sequels. Lana and Lily Wachowski are proud of their teamwork and their successful filmmaking careers. Next we have Alvin Ailey. Alvin Ailey was a dancer, choreographer, and founder of one of the most successful American dance companies. Raised by a single mother during the Great Depression, Ailey had a hard childhood. He was sometimes left with relatives while his mother looked for work. Ailey was introduced to dance in high school and fell in love with it. When he was 18, he started to become serious about professional dance. As his career progressed, Ailey started his own dance company and dance school. The Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater gave black dancers more opportunities to perform, and it brought together ballet, modern, and jazz styles. Ailey united audiences of all races by showing black heritage and culture in dance. Alvin Ailey was proud building an inclusive dance company that performed his artistic creations. And next we have Sally Ride. When Sally Ride was in college, she was excited to read that NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, was going to finally train women, as well as men, to be astronauts. More than 8,000 people applied for the job. Ride was one of the few chosen. She trained and worked hard at NASA for five years. Finally, she was picked to become the first American woman in space. Ride flew into space twice, where she had the important job of operating the shuttle's robotic arm to help release satellites. She also went on spacewalks and conducted scientific experiments. After she left NASA, she became a teacher. Ride loved getting young people interested in science and space. Sally Ride was proud to have been a team member in America's space program. And next we have Jean Cordova. Here we go. 
Jane Cordova grew up in a household with 11 brothers and sisters. She was a leader in her family. She made sure her younger siblings agreed on what TV shows to watch and that they finished eating their vegetables. After high school, Cordova thought she would become a nun or a social worker, but she found her real calling fighting for lesbians' rights and dignity. Cordova said, we're no longer going to be invisible. She took her leadership skills from childhood and put them to use. Cordova formed lesbian organizations and conferences. She fought against laws that were unfair to LGBTQ people. She also started a magazine for lesbians. She said her work as an activist was a wild, joyous ride. Jean Cordova was proud of her work fighting for equality. Next we have Maurice Sendak. As a child, Maurice Sendak loved to read books, watch Mickey Mouse cartoons, and listen to his father tell exciting tales. Stories took him away from his own life and gave him wonderful new worlds to imagine. As he got older, Sendak also loved drawing these magical places. He filled his pictures with humor and charm, as well as drama and honest emotion. He said, I refuse to lie to children. When his book, Where the Wild Things Are, was published, it won the Caldecott Medal, the top award for children's book illustrators. Later, it was made into a Hollywood movie. Sendak became one of the most popular children's book creators in the world. Maurice Sendak was proud of making beautiful books that children and adults loved. Next we have Sarah Josephine Baker. Friends and family told Sarah Josephine Baker that being a doctor wasn't the right thing for a proper young lady to do. That made her want to do it even more, especially because she was mourning her father and brother, who had recently become sick and died. So Baker went to one of the few medical schools willing to train women, the Women's Medical College of the New York Infirmary. Baker became Dr. Joe and took a job with the city of New York. There she cared for people in poor, crowded neighborhoods, where many babies were dying from a lack of proper health care. Baker realized that the most important thing was preventing babies and people from getting sick, rather than having to cure them after they became sick. She started programs to send nurses to teach mothers how to care for their new babies and keep them healthy. Baker's program soon spread to other cities. Sarah Josephine Baker was proud that her public health work saved thousands of children's lives. Next is Frank Ocean. Frank Ocean grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana, a city known for its music culture. He saw live jazz performances and listened to R&B songs with his mother. Ocean said singing along with the radio became me wanting to be on radio. He wanted to make money as a musician, so he started recording songs by the time he was 13. When Ocean was still a teenager, Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans. He lost his music equipment in the disaster, but he kept working. He began to write songs for other musicians. Then, once he began to release his own music, his career grew quickly. Ocean's music blends hip-hop, soul, and jazz in a unique way. He has won Grammy Awards and fame for his popular songs. Frank Ocean is proud of the music he, he has created and the success his work has earned. And next we have Sharice Davids. Even as a child, Sharice Davids always seemed to have confidence in herself. As an adult, competing in mixed martial arts, or MMA, increased her confidence even more. She said that MMA made me a more solid, disciplined person, and it definitely helped with my mental toughness. Davids went to college in Kansas, then attended law school in New York. After graduating, she worked in a law firm and in government. Davids wanted to do more to serve her Ho-Chunk American Indian community and the people of Kansas. 
so she decided to run for Congress in 2018. It was a tough race, but she was up to the challenge and won. Sharice Davids is proud to be one of the first two American Indian women elected to Congress. Next we have Adrian Greenberg. Helping out in his parents' hat shop after school, Adrian Greenberg learned about clothes and fashion. He liked to draw, so he went to art school after graduating high school. One summer, Greenberg got a job designing costumes for a small theater. He found that he had a talent for creating beautiful clothes for stage characters. Soon he was working in Hollywood, designing costumes for the movies. Greenberg's most famous costumes were for the characters in The Wizard of Oz, including Dorothy's famous ruby slippers. Greenberg worked on more than 200 films during his career, and millions of people saw the elegant clothes and shoes he designed. Adrian Greenberg was proud that his talent helped make great movies even better. Next we have Ben Bars. Ben Bars had a girl's body when he was born, but as he grew, he felt like he was really a boy. It was confusing to him, and he hid those feelings. He grew up as a tomboy named Barbara, who loved roughhousing, trucks, and science. Bars was an excellent student who went to medical school and began doing research on the brain. At age 40, Bars finally felt like his true self when he began transitioning from female to male. He was a world expert on brain cells and became the head of neurobiology at Stanford University. Bars earned the high honor of being elected to the National Academy of Sciences. He strongly supported women in the sciences and guided many young people into new areas of research. Ben Bars took pride in his own discoveries and in the many young scientists he trained. And next we have... Leonard Bernstein. As a boy, Leonard Bernstein loved music. When a relative gave his family an old piano, Lenny ran his fingers up and down the keys. It sounded wonderful to him. He spent hours practicing, and he learned to play beautiful melodies. His music filled their home. Bernstein wanted to fill his whole life with music, so he kept playing. He went on to write great songs, symphonies, a movie score, and the music for the Broadway hit West Side Story. His works have been enjoyed by millions of people. Throughout his career, Bernstein had a wide range of successes, including being the musical director of the New York Philharmonic Orchestra and winning a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. Leonard Bernstein traveled the world to perform lead orchestras, and teach, proudly sharing his love of music. Next we have Mary Yu. Mary Yu's parents were immigrants who had to work low-wage jobs. They encouraged their daughter to get a good education and achieve higher goals. Yu's goal was soon clear. She wanted to help people. She worked for the Catholic Church for 10 years, trying to solve the problems of poverty and injustice. To do more, she set new goals and went to law school. Yu spent many years as a prosecutor and then as a judge. She oversaw all kinds of legal cases as well as hundreds of same-sex adoptions and marriages. When she was appointed as a justice of the Washington State Supreme Court, she became the first LGBTQ person to serve there. Yu believes that we are really one human community, that we have more in common than we have differences. Mary Yu is proud of her life's work to treat people with compassion and fairness. And next we have Billie Jean King. Billie Jean King loved sports just like the rest of her family. When she was 11, she began learning to play tennis at the public courts near her home. It was fun, and she wanted to hit perfect shots. King practiced long hours to grow stronger and quicker. As a teenager, she began entering tournaments. Soon she was winning them. 
King became a world champion, winning dozens of major tennis tournaments, including 20 Wimbledon titles. Not only was she tough when playing tennis, but she was also tough when it came to fighting for women's rights. King wanted the same fair rules for everyone, in sports and in life. In the world of tennis, she fought for female players to get the same amount of prize money as male players. Billie Jean King was especially proud of her work to create equal opportunities for women. And next we have Tim Cook. Even in high school, Tim Cook was such a hard worker that his classmates voted him most studious. His drive continued as he studied engineering and business and worked in technology companies. He joined Apple a company now known around the world for making phones and computers. Since Cook has taken over as the chief executive officer or CEO of Apple, the company has grown and created new products. Cook was the first major business leader to come out as gay. He is a very private person, but he knows young LGBTQ people need role models in all professions. He said that if hearing that the CEO of Apple was gay could help someone struggling to come to terms with who they are, then it was worth it. Tim Cook is proud of his work as an innovator in the tech field and of being an openly gay CEO. And next we have Jane Addams. Jane Addams grew up knowing she was fortunate. Her family had a lovely home, plenty of food, and lots of friends in their town. Unlike most women at the time, Adams was even able to go to college because of her family's wealth. After college, while she was traveling with a friend, Adams saw great hunger and poverty. She wanted to find a way to help. Back in back home in Chicago, Adams and her friend opened Whole House, a place for poor people to get food, child care, job training, and even take art classes. Adams also worked to help pass laws to protect workers and children. Later, she spoke out against wars. She founded the Women's Peace Party, and she joined women around the world to work for peace. Jane Adams must have been proud when she became the first American woman to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. And next we have Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin was a young boy in Puerto Rico when he began performing in TV commercials. At the age of 12, he joined the boy band Menudo and toured the world singing and dancing for thousands of people. Today, many consider him the king of Latin pop. He's known for his upbeat music and high-energy performances. Martin has sold millions of albums, bringing Spanish-language music to wider audiences. He has also used his fame to support organizations fighting for the well-being and rights of children. Martin served as a goodwill ambassador for UNICEF, an agency that provides help to children. He was inspired to start his own foundation after meeting poor children around the world. Ricky Martin is proud to be a performer who brings joy to people through his music and charitable work. Next we have Nina Schwartz. In college, Nina Schwartz was fascinated with how the human body works. She wanted to learn more about hormones and how they act as messengers to tell organs, such as the heart and brain, to do their jobs. Schwartz researched hormones to understand more about reproduction. Her discoveries had a groundbreaking impact on the field of medicine. Schwartz also started the Association of Women in Science, an organization that opened up more opportunities for women. When speaking about science, she said, we must encourage women and other previously excluded groups to engage in it. In her book, A Lab of My Own, Nina Schwartz told the world about her work and how proud she was to be a successful lesbian scientist. 
And next we have Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen DeGeneres always loved to joke around. She became a comedian and then a TV sitcom star. When DeGeneres bravely came out as a lesbian on her show Ellen, many of her fans were shocked. Her show was canceled soon after. She wasn't offered any work for three years, but much like Dory, the famous fish character DeGeneres voiced in the movies Finding Nemo and Finding Dory, DeGeneres just kept swimming. Because of her warm and fun personality and her persistence, she got the chance to start her own TV talk show, The Ellen DeGeneres Show. People loved seeing her on TV again, and she became an even bigger success. Ellen DeGeneres is proud to be a pioneer for LGBTQ people in entertainment. And next we have James Baldwin. James Baldwin was the oldest child in a large, poor family in Harlem, New York. At home, Baldwin's stepfather was hard on him and called him cruel names. Out in the world, Baldwin had to face prejudice against both black Americans and gay people. But he knew he was smart, and he felt he had important things to say, so he began to write. He wrote stories and novels about the pain of being treated badly. Baldwin's stories even had gay and bisexual characters, which was unusual for books at that time. He wrote essays advocating for fairness, and went on tours to speak about the civil rights movement. His books became world famous. James Baldwin was proud to be a voice fighting for the respect that he knew all people deserved. Next we have Harvey Milk. Harvey Milk loved talking and laughing with customers at his small camera shop in San Francisco, California. He also loved bringing his neighbors together to improve their community. Many LGBTQ people lived there, but they were often treated unfairly. Milk wanted to enter politics so he could do even more to help make things better. But he found out it wasn't so easy. He lost three elections. Still, Milk had lots of energy and hope. Finally, he became a San Francisco supervisor. Milk was one of the first openly gay people elected to office in the United States. He worked with his fellow supervisors to pass a law to stop discrimination against all LGBTQ people in San Francisco. Harvey Milk was proud of bringing people together to fight for fairness. Thank you, Harvey. And that's the end of our book. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video relaxing and educational, and I hope that you have a very 